This video is on efficiency and power loss in transformers. Ideal transformers are transformers that have no power loss. That is, the electrical power input from the primary coil is equal to the electrical output from the secondary coil. Using the equation for electrical power, we can equate the voltage and current of the primary coil with the voltage and current of the secondary coil. This will give us another ratio for an ideal transformer, where the voltage of the primary coil divided by the voltage of the secondary coil would equal to the current of the secondary coil divided by the current of the primary coil. We refer to the previous transformer as an ideal transformer because transformers in real life actually will always have some extent of power loss. When the electrical energy is transmitted from the primary coil to the secondary coil, some amount of energy is always transformed to a different form, which results in power loss. Therefore, we can say that in all transformers that are non-ideal, the power in the primary coil, P primary, is always greater than the power in the secondary coil, P secondary. The difference in the two powers is the amount of energy that's being transformed to a different form. The efficiency of a transformer refers to the percentage of electrical energy that is transferred from the primary coil to the secondary coil. This is calculated by dividing the power of the secondary coil by the power of the primary coil, then multiplied by 100 to obtain a percentage. Let's look at how you can calculate efficiency. The voltage across a primary and secondary coil of a particular transformer is 200 and 500 volts respectively. The current flowing through the primary coil is 15 amps, and the current flowing through the secondary coil is 3 amps. Calculate the efficiency of the transformer. Recall that efficiency is given by the power in the secondary coil, it's called a PS, divided by the power in the primary coil, multiplied by 100. The power of the secondary coil is further given by voltage times by the current, VS and IS respectively, divided by the power in the primary coil, which will be VP multiplied by IP, the primary voltage and the primary current, and this is all times by 100. VS is 500 volts, IS is 3 amps, divided by VP, which is 200 volts, and IP is 15 amps. And this fraction here is times by 100, which gives us an efficiency of 50%. A transformer with 50% efficiency means that exactly half of the energy from the primary coil has been transformed into a different form. In other words, only 50% of the energy remains as electrical energy in the secondary coil. There are a few reasons why transformers are never 100% efficient. The energy loss that causes transformers to have less than 100% efficiency include the following. Incomplete flux linkage resistive heat production, and the generation of eddy currents in the iron core. We'll discuss each reason individually. The induction of current in the secondary coil of a transformer is due to the changes in magnetic flux produced by the current in the primary coil. Although the iron core improves the transmission of magnetic flux between the two sets of coils, some amount of flux is not transmitted. This can be better visualized by looking at the orientation of the magnetic field produced by current going through a set of coils. The flux that goes away from the secondary coil is usually not transmitted and carried by the iron core. And due to this incomplete flux transmission or linkage, not all of the electrical energy in the primary coil is transferred to the secondary coil. The second reason why there is power loss in transformers is due to resistive heat loss. Keep in mind that primary and secondary coils are made of wires of a particular material, and materials usually have electrical resistance, and this is measured in the unit ohms. Whenever a material has electrical resistance, current that's flowing through the material, that is the primary and secondary coils, will result in some degree of heat loss. That is, some amount of the electrical energy in the form of the current will be transformed into heat. 
We can minimize the amount of energy transformed into heat by reducing the electrical resistance of the coils. By way of review, there are four main factors that affect the electrical resistance of a material. The length of the conductor, longer the conductor, higher the resistance, the material itself. Some materials will have naturally lower resistances than other ones. The cross-sectional area of the wire, bigger the cross-sectional area, lower the resistance. And the temperature of the conductor. Usually for metals, higher the temperature, higher the resistance. Knowing these four factors, we can develop a few solutions. We can use a different material that has a lower resistance, which will minimize the amount of energy transformed into heat. There are materials which we call superconductors, which have an electrical resistance of zero at a certain temperature. We can use coils with greater cross-sectional area, which will also have a lower resistance. We can also lower the temperature that the transformer coils are at and this can be done using nitrogen gas. All of these theoretically are good solutions, but really only the second one here, where we're using coils of greater cross-sectional area is a feasible one. This is because materials such as superconductors, they are expensive, and they require a low temperature to maintain their zero electrical resistance. Likewise, to maintain a low temperature, using substances such as nitrogen gas is also more expensive and less economical compared to using wires of greater cross-sectional area. The third reason why there's power loss in transformers is due to the generation of eddy currents in the iron core. Recall that the role of the iron core is to increase the strength of the magnetic field produced by the currents in the primary coil and also to transmit the flux between the two coils. However, the soft iron core is also an electrical conductor, as it is metallic. The change in magnetic flux produced by the primary coil is not only felt by the secondary coil, but also experienced by the iron core itself. According to Faraday's law, this change in flux will induce EMF and produce eddy currents in the iron core. In this case, this eddy current is unwanted because we want all of the electrical energy to be transferred from the primary coil into the secondary coil, not in the iron core. The eddy current that's induced in the iron core will actually quickly convert into heat due to the high electrical resistance of iron. So the induction of eddy current actually reduces the efficiency of the transformer. And this is something that we don't want to happen. The solution to this problem is what we call the lamination of the iron core. The lamination of the iron core involves cutting the iron core into thin slices. If we take the iron core and we look from the side, we can see that the eddy current induced from the changing flux from the primary coil is circular, hence the name. After the iron core is cut into thin slices, layers of insulation are inserted between the slices of the iron core. Afterwards, the slices of the iron core and the insulative layers are reassembled and glued back together. By doing so, the eddy currents are still induced because the iron core still experiences a change in magnetic flux, but the presence of the insulation between the slices of the iron core will prevent and hinder eddy current flow. This causes many smaller eddy currents to be induced, but the lamination will minimize the total magnitude of the eddy current that's present, which means the amount of energy that's transformed into eddy current, which is electrical energy, is reduced. It is important to understand that lamination of the iron core involves cutting the iron core in a very specific orientation. We call this vertical lamination. Recall that the eddy currents that's induced in the iron core will flow in a circular direction around it. So on the top and bottom, they will flow in the way shown. And on the left and right, where the primary and secondary coils are, they will flow this way. By cutting the iron core into vertical slices, as shown here, this will prevent the eddy current from flowing in its position as shown already. In this other diagram, the eddy current will flow this way. 
So by cutting the iron core into thin slices and inserting the insulation between them, the eddy current can no longer flow in this direction. Instead, the eddy current will need to flow inside each thin slice of iron core, which greatly reduces the total magnitude of the eddy current. And this is how we can minimize power loss. In contrast, horizontal lamination, where the iron core is cut horizontally into thin slices, is not as effective. Because when the eddy currents are induced in a circular manner, as shown here, they flow in the same plane as the horizontal slices. In this diagram, the eddy currents will flow normally like this. So by cutting the iron core into horizontal slices, this will actually not prevent and hinder the flow of eddy currents. So horizontal lamination is ineffective because the flow of the eddy current is not impeded as compared to before when we had vertical lamination.